presenting this work that we call Fairness is Not Static. Uh, this is work with uh, my colleagues at Google Research in Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, including uh, Hansa Srinivasan over there and Joni Halpern, who's probably here. Uh, you should talk to them, they're great. Um, so in this paper, we advocate for using simulation as a standard unit of analysis for studying fairness in machine learning systems. All right, so uh, a major contribution of the Fat Star community over the last several years has been to shift machine learning research agendas from just thinking about learning decision rules from data and asking questions like, was I right, to starting to ask questions about the consequences of taking actions according to those decision rules out in the world, right? Asking questions like, did things turn out well, and for whom? Um, but practically, when this agenda is often operationalized, uh, we see it as this workflow that looks very similar to the sort of older was I right paradigm, right? We uh, end up evaluating metrics on uh, fixed test data sets. Uh, the metrics are just different, right? So instead of just evaluating accuracy, we might also start evaluating metrics uh, that are measuring notions of fairness, like demographic parity, for example, um, am I making decisions at similar rates uh, in group A and group B? Or uh, notions like equality of opportunity, uh, that is, among qualified individuals in group A and group B, um, am I making decisions at similar rates? Right. Uh, that, that latter one is often also framed as uh, equalizing true positive rates. Um, so this workflow is useful, and it, it can uh, uncover a number of inequities, uh, but it is also far from complete. Right. Um, and so one uh, aspect of that incompleteness that we focus on in this paper is the fact that this sort of workflow uh, doesn't handle dynamics very well. Oops. Um, right, so uh, in particular, if you're in a situation where uh, there are feedback loops between the decision system that's actually, uh, that, that's actually making or taking actions out in the world, um, or if you're interested in long-term consequences, uh, just examining these metrics on fixed data sets uh, is not going to uh, capture some of these effects. Um, and now we're far from the first people to point this out. There are a number of people in this room who have done excellent work over the last several years to incorporate dynamics into uh, fairness evaluations. Um, but our sort of modest contribution here is to suggest that simulation studies ought to be uh, used more often to try to understand these, uh, these questions, right? And uh, to put some sort of momentum behind the suggestion, uh, we are also offering a software framework that we call ML Fairness Gym um, that uh, you may find useful in incorporating simulations into your own research. All right, so how do we think about assessing fairness in simulation? So uh, we, we consider uh, simulations that can be designed as these sort of agent environment loops where uh, the agent represents your decision system, the environment is often a model of the population that the decision system is operating on, um, and uh, right, the agent sort of takes in observations from the environment, it performs actions that can change the environment state, and all the while we can see what's going on uh, in this system by measuring metrics that are evolving over time. So I think it's useful to contrast this against the sort of standard workflow that I was talking about earlier, uh, where we end up sort of breaking this loop, right? We sort of freeze the knowledge that we have about the environment in a data set, and we just compute metrics on this static data set, the sort of snapshot of what was going on at a given point in time. Um, so simulation gives us this opportunity to close this loop, but we can't just do that for free, right? What we have to do is start making assumptions about how the environment is going to react and uh, evolve according to the sets of decisions that the agent is making. Um, and this is hard, and it's really scary, right? Because now we have to actually seek to understand the world in which our systems are actually operating. Uh, this is sort of, you know, anathema to a lot of people who uh, would really just like to think about math. Um, but I think in the end, right, understanding the context in which we are deploying our decision systems is a, uh, right, it's a really important aspect of understanding fairness and related concern. That's sort of exactly why we're all here. Um, and so again, we are far from the first people to suggest this sort of thing. In fact, our interdisciplinary reviewer uh, very kindly pointed out that uh, social scientists have been emphasizing the importance of social context uh, forever. Right. 
Um, so in this paper, to drive the point home, uh, we consider implementing some simulations of some of the simple systems that have been uh, proposed in the fairness literature uh, over the last several years. Um, and then we just watch how they evolve over time from a bunch of different angles, right? Um, and, right, okay. Um, what we find is that when we're working in simulation, we can often find that there are qualitatively different stories that we end up telling about the policies that we, uh, that, that we can, uh, that, that we often end up implementing in these situations. And uh, in fact, when we consider these environments under dynamics, there are often misalignments between the metrics that we're calculating and the actual goals that we have. Um, and right, often this behavior is difficult to predict analytically, mostly because we wouldn't have even thought to examine the system from a particular angle if we hadn't run the simulation in the first place. Um, so to give you a quick example of what, uh, what a simulation looks like, uh, we can consider the, one of the sort of canonical examples uh, in the fairness literature in fair classification, thinking about a bank that's making these binary lending decisions uh, when a stream of applicants comes in. Uh, so in this environment, uh, which is an implementation of uh, some dynamics that were suggested in this wonderful paper by Lydia Liu and others uh, called the delayed impact of fair machine learning, uh, we have an agent that's, that's acting as a bank. Um, a set of applicants come in, present their credit score. The bank makes a lend or reject decision. Um, but, and uh, we have two groups in this population, uh, one group of which has uh, much lower credit scores than the other one. Right. And um, the sort of wrinkle here, the dynamics that, uh, that uh, the delayed impact paper added to this situation uh, is that when the bank makes a lending decision, if the uh, individual is able to pay back, their credit score goes down, or it goes up. If the individual is unable to pay back, their credit score goes down. And so we have this sort of evolution of credit scores over time. Now, what the delayed impact paper showed and what we also found in our simulations was that uh, there can be unintended consequences to supposedly fair policies. So one policy that tries to equalize true positive rates, uh, what they found analytically in that paper using a sort of one-step analysis, is that you can end up with these gaps in the credit score distribution that are actually much wider if you use one of these fairness-constrained policies than if you use a policy that is sort of maximizing profit uh, in an unconstrained way. Um, however, in these simulations, we could also examine, say, uh, the cumulative number of loans that were uh, granted to each of these groups. And here we found that the equality of opportunity policy, which was hurting people from the credit score uh, view of the world, uh, was actually really helping this disadvantaged group um, from the loans granted view of the world. Right? And this sort of highlights that uh, the way that we measure outcomes in the system uh, really matters in terms of how we're going to evaluate this, sets of, this set of policies. All right, so I'm out of time. There's a great Simpsons Paradox thing here um, that I encourage you to read. Statisticians love talking about Simpsons Paradox. Um, okay. Um, right, what I'd like to say is that there are a bunch of other scenarios that we've implemented, some of which we discussed in the paper, um, and which are on our repo on GitHub. Uh, please consider looking at our uh, ML Fairness Gym tools. Uh, come talk to us if you're just interested in simulation, and especially if you're interested in using our tools. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>